Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about um, the documentary on Netflix of the disappearance of Madeleine McCann. Um, I'm really interested in like all of the different theories, conspiracy theories and like, my own opinion has differed so much from watching it. Um, just a disclaimer, I am filming on the same day as my last video that's in the, like that I posted. That's why the ketchup is still there and why I'm still wearing the same clothes. But I've seen loads of different opinions on this matter and um, yeah, so before I watched this documentary I 100 million billion trillion gazillion percent thought that the parents had something to do with it in any way shape or form. They may have not taken the kid or had alibis but and but I believe that they did know who had taken it, what happened etc etc. After watching the documentary my opinion has changed but we will discuss my opinion at the end. After we have gone through all the different theories, suspects etc etc. So I have been reading some extra information as well on like different theories. Um, it may have not come up in the documentary but um, I've read about it and after watching the documentary I feel like I have more to say about it. Anyway, so I'm going to explain the situation and how it happened for anyone who is slightly unsure on the situation that happened. So basically, on May the 3rd, 2007, um, Madeleine was abducted, taken, murdered, whatever your opinion now is, um, from a three-storey building that they were staying in and they were on the ground floor in apartment 5a um madeline was sleeping next to the in window that when kate found out she was missing um was open so basically um the parents of all the children um would go to this kind of area have dinner etc etc and leave the kids at home in their apartment every now and then the parents would check up on them. This is how far away they were, it was a little walk like around the pool um, and down the road and so yeah that is where they were in this situation. Um, at 9.05 Jerry checked on the kids and um, he noticed the door was wider, he was listening and realised that there was no noise um, so he thought everything was fine. At 9.10, um, one of the parents' friends, his name was Matthew um, Old, Oldfield, he checked on them. Um, he remembers seeing the kids, but he does not remember seeing Madeline, um, if she was still in her bed or not. Um, as he, he wasn't his kid, so he was just doing a slight check. Um, yeah, basically. And then at 9.15... Um, this is a big important part. The parents' friend Jane um, was walking to go check on the kids and she saw a man carrying a child in her pyjamas with bare feet. I think it was pink frilly pyjamas and her feet were bare. Um, she did later on go to a professional um, like artist but at the time um, she drew someone from the Portuguese police drew this picture. Basically an egg with some hair on it. But she did not remember what the face looked like. Then Kate McCann went to go check on the children at 10 o'clock and she, when she looked she noticed that Madeline was no longer there and the window was wide open. When she first looked she slightly like just checked the door, like opened the door looked quick and then walked away and she heard a massive gust of wind and the door slammed so she thought that something had really happened so she checked again and realised that Madeline was missing. The first thing that she said was that they have taken Madeline. When you think about it your first thoughts, she, her head may have been muddled but it's like Madeline's missing, like Madeline could have gone on a walk, she could have gone anywhere, you do not know that she has been taken. She then later on um, said that she 
that Madeline's toy was out of reach or something and that Madeline would never go walkabouts without her cuddly toy but you'd not think that when you've just realised that your kid is missing you would try to think them you would try and investigate and notice oh a cuddly toy has been moved Madeline must have been taken that's not what your first thought is and the fact that she left her children still in the apartment as well was a little bit sketchy but oh well so that is the situation everyone was looking um obviously it got out around really quickly everyone was looking but one thing they did do wrong was that the people were allowed in and out of the apartment um to see if they could find her which is like damaging criminal evidence because now they've had loads of different hands touching every part of the room and then they could be part of a suspect or not etc etc so that is what happened and it took a while for the portuguese police to get involved which is also another sketchy kind of sign but yeah so there is obviously the um different theories and different things so obviously the main obvious one that kate suggested is that someone had come in and taken the child in the area that they were living in or they were staying in um like burglaries and robberies had been four times more like in that month like where they were so the burglaries were much much higher um so yeah um they suggest that a burglar may have come in and um tried to take something and Madeline woke up so they took Madeline with her where but I don't believe this one so much because um the parents did give Madeline and the, I think they're twins or brother and sister um cowpole to help them sleep and whole through the time that people were checking the room that Madeline was in the children did not wake up at all because they had probably been given so much cowpole so I highly doubt that Madeline would have woken up if the twins didn't wake up after all of the people making such a racket so I don't I'm not sure about someone taking the child um another kind of like suspicion was that um, there was a translator, kind of journalist person, who was helping um, the McCanns and English people that they were with translate to the Portuguese police um, so that they could help. Obviously, it would make it much easier, but after he had translated everything, he still seemed to always be a tag along, always be there constantly. constantly. Um, some journalists and reporters thought it was a bit sketchy in that um, he was acting really odd and weird. Uh, yeah, and there was a story that they did tell about how there was a little girl who had gone missing and this certain guy was constantly helping. He was quite odd, but he was always helping these parents. But it soon turned out that he was the one that killed the child. So it's speculated that he was a suspect and they sneakily got him out of his house um, by saying that they needed some help translating um, some things that an English person had said to the Portuguese police and basically they raided his house and tried to search for Madeline and they couldn't find him so he was kind of let off the hook but he then it was then um, found out that he was lying about things that he had said so they obviously checked again and nothing was found but honestly I do think that there may be something there I think he may have been involved maybe just from listening to that other story that um, was that happened in the past um another thing that happened um was to do with the portuguese police so this links on to how madeline how the parents of madeline um were a suspect and why they may have killed madeline so so the portuguese police um obviously did some tests and had some sniffer dogs come in and they would sniff around the hotel and in certain areas. Um, they did find 
a scent of blood around um, the back of the couch in the wardrobe and a cupboard which had the cat that um, Kate was constantly holding that Madeline apparently would never let go of. Um, and obviously they had a corpse dog come in um, and he sniffed in the same places so obviously they got some samples from there and sent them to a UK lab, a UK lab, not a Portuguese lab, a UK lab. Um, the dogs also sniffed out every single car from all of um, the friends that were there when like with the family and the only car that they sniffed something out from was um, Kate and Jerry's car so they took some samples from there too and sent them to a UK, a UK lab. So this UK lab did loads of um, experiments on samples to like find out if there was any DNA from Madeline that to prove um, I'm guilty basically and they sent their results back to the Portuguese. I'm not going to tell you what the results are yet because I, this is where it turned me because I, I initially thought well they're completely guilty they found blood in the back of the boot they found it in their wardrobe in their cupboard behind the sofa like they're 100 percent guilty so the evidence was sem then sent back to the portuguese police and a translator translated the evidence um over to portuguese obviously so the police could read it etc the translator only translated a paragraph of evaluation of the results and showed the police and the person in charge of the investigation in the Portuguese police at that time was also um, in contact with the reporter and she, he told the reporter that there was blood of Madeline of Madeline found in the back of the car and obviously she reported it out everyone like like read about it she got so much hate from it that when like when they were in need the reporters were there to help them they would try and like promote it everywhere so that nothing could be found and now all the focus was on Kate doing it um Jerry had an alibi so it couldn't have been him and obviously Kate was by herself looking for the kids so she didn't have an alibi anyway so Kate had to go into loads of different questioning. She did, however, say no comment or quite bizarre, random um, answers to these questions, which is slightly um, unencouraging. But, anyways, um, it was then later on um, announced, if you want, if you'd say. Um, that the results that the Portuguese police had been letting out were incorrect. The result showed that yes there was some sort of DNA related to Madeline but it could have been from a large like like further on relatives. Bearing in mind the people that were using this car was his mum, her mum and dad and she has 50% of both their genetics so if there's a tiny weeny chance it could be Madeline, she has 50% of her mum and 50% of her dad in it who have been using that car and probably touched the boot of some sort. So it's then going to suggest that it's of Madeline's DNA, isn't it? Because so it might have been her parents. It could have been relatives from quite far down the line that still would relate, it would still like go back to Madeline. Um, and obviously then the chief... Um, inspector or police person that was in charge of the case was then fired. <laughs> it gets a little beefy, um, just slightly just adding it in there because um, that reporter or police inspector person whatever um, then wrote a book about um, the whole situation and obviously um, Kate and Jerry had a very watchful eye to make sure that he wasn't giving out any more information that was incorrect and were probably waiting to see him as well so yeah um so then that's what put Kate and Jerry like at the main suspect but I do not totally believe that it was them I did 100 million percent believe that it was them but only because of that evidence that I'd heard about the blood being in the boot I was like oh well how can they get out of this but obviously 
his mum and dad, her mum and dad have like the same kind of genetics as her anyway, so her D his DNA, they're all the same ish, ish, because they made her so. And obviously, the last thing that I believe is probably what happened um, and is most likely to have happened is joining back to someone intruding. However, I don't believe that it was burglars that come in and saw Madeline wake up and take her. I believe that the man, there was another woman or that um, had opened a door to a man who was going around um, trying to fundraise for orphans that of children. He was saying things like... Um, three children had lost their mum and dad um, in a car accident and they've been moved to an orphanage and not sent home to other family who could then look after them like an auntie and uncle etc um so he was trying to fundraise f money for um this orphanage and it was later on found out that there were no orphanages nearby and this man's description was also slightly close to the drawing of that Jane saw. Um, the man that Jane saw, he had long brown hair and as did this guy who was knocking on the door. It was also told by a lady that um, he was staring at her child when he was saying this. He wasn't looking into her eyes, she, he was staring at her child. And she then went upstairs and did some washing, came back down and found the man downstairs with her child. He obviously ran away after she came down and she just, I would have obviously very shocked. Um, but the description of this man looked fairly similar to the man in the drawing that Jane had done. They both had long brown hair, although you couldn't see the face, it gave an extra description of the face. They drew his face onto the description that Jane gave um, to give the public a description, I guess, like so that they could try and find this man. And I genuinely feel like this man is the person that took Madeline because um, it was then told that the pyjamas that um, Madeline was wearing that night linked with the description that Jane gave of the little girl who was in someone's arm and barefooted walking down the street. So I feel like she had been taken by this man um, because also there was people who, when they were on the beach, um, this man was spotted um, around the beach as well. So he was spotted in locations that Madeline was and it just seems really sketchy to me. I believe that someone did take them. Um, I don't know who's involved in it. Maybe that little journalist translator person. I'm not sure but I generally feel like they were abdu abducted and um, the parents didn't have anything to do with it because they seem like they do love their other kids and I can't imagine them doing anything to Madeline so yeah I do I, I don't know I was very very sure that they did do something because there was other things that people had said but they were all like rumours like you know like when you hear things like people just assume oh yeah that's true and like this documentary really opens your eyes to things that actually really did happen and yeah so that is kind of my opinion and some background evidence or background information on the whole uh, Madeleine McCann thing um, I did miss out some things um, from the documentary it is eight episodes long out an hour each episode but um, I wanted to tell you things that I believe the most like you may watch it and think that's more sketchy than what you said but I genuinely believe like what I have said is what's the most like the most important kind of parts and what things actually seem like they could have happened um but yeah I, I also do believe that um the Portuguese police were definitely blaming the parents so much just because they wanted they didn't want tourists to like think that the Port Portugal was like full of 
people who adopted children they wanted they wanted to blame the parents so that um people wouldn't be scared to come so i generally feel like the portuguese police have made up quite a, quite a lot of rubbish about the parents and i do generally believe that someone had taken them in the description that jane and this other lady had then gone on to like say so yeah i hope you enjoy this video and i'm really interested in things like this um I don't want to seem insensitive about things like this. I do find them really interesting. Um, so yeah, if there's anything else that you want me to research and look up and try and find like other disappearances and um, read up about it and then give you my opinion and some background information on it, then I'd love to do that. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you in my next one.